In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the ways that you can use track maps and After Effects to make your videos better. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada, I specialize in sports videography. And we're gonna do a pretty simple After Effects tutorial today showing you how I like to use track mats to make my sports video edits better and how you can do the same. So first you're probably wondering what a track mat is. And a track mat essentially defines the transparency of a layer by using information from the layer above it which in simpler terms, I guess, means that you can use a track map to create a mask or a window by using information from a different layer rather than inputting manual keyframes and doing a whole lot of tedious work. And there's two different types of track maps that you can use in After Effects. I guess there's technically four different types, but we'll get to that. The first of these two types is an alpha mat, and an alpha mat defines the transparency of one layer by using the transparency of another. So I have this clip from a volleyball game that I filmed a little bit ago, and you can just see I have this player walking and catching the ball. The university here is called University of British Columbia, or UBC, as you can see from the little tag on the player's shirt here. So we're going to make a mask that says UBC Volleyball on this video clip. So let's grab our text tool in After Effects. We'll click and we're gonna write UBC Volleyball. And we can adjust the size of this text and the position of this text as we please. So let's maybe bring the UBC a little bit bigger. And if you wanted to show a title on screen, you could just leave it at this. But when we use a track mat, you can see we come here under this track mat tab. And if you don't have this available, you can come into the bottom corner here and just click on this circle and square and it will either collapse or expand those controls. You come to the bottom layer, which is the video clip in this case, and turn track mat on by selecting the layer that you want to reference. So we're going to reference the text layer that we just made, and we want to make sure that we have alpha mat, which is this little button here that has like the circle inside the square, enabled. We'll get to what this little square is here in a moment, but you can see that by enabling the track mat and selecting alpha mat, we now have this video clip only visible on the text that says UBC Volleyball. And if we play it through, you can see that the video clip moves and just stays within that simple text mask that we've created. If you want to invert that, which is what this is here, that'll give you an alpha inverted mat, and that's going to make it so that the video is visible everywhere except for where that text is. So this is nice if you want to put like a texture or another video clip underneath. So right now, if we were to make a solid, for example, so let's go layer, new, solid, and maybe we sample the blue color from the stands here. We could drop that solid underneath and maybe we wanna give it a texture, so we'll go texturize, and we can reference the video clip that we have, select effects and masks. Now you kind of get this cool effect where you have this text that's kind of showing through the video and you have the actual video clip itself. And this isn't like a super refined example of this, but you can get really creative with the ways that you use these alpha mats to play with text and get a whole bunch of fun ways to show titles beyond just writing text on a screen. So now you kind of have seen what alpha mats are, but let's talk about luma mats. And luma mats are very similar to alpha mats, except the transparency of that bottom layer, your video clip in this case, is gonna be defined by the luminance value of the top layer. So white values and anything that's colored white is going to be visible on the bottom layer and anything on that top layer that's colored in black is not going to be visible on the bottom layer. So back in After Effects here, you can see if I create a new composition and we'll just call this circle. Now, if I come to this new composition called circle we've created and I create a new solid, which is black and put it in the background here. And then I draw a shape that has a white fill and I put that right in the middle. You'll see that if I come back to our composition with the video and I drag this new circle composition in that we've made over top of our video clip and then turn on track match to circle, we'll have nothing initially. But then if I get rid of the inverted mat and then I select not alpha mat, but click this again and then you transition from like this little circle emoji to a sun thing. This is now using a luma mat, and the luma mat is going to make the white value, which in this case is this circle that we've drawn, visible. And all the black values, even though they're not transparent, like you can see that there's a black solid back there, because they're dark, they're not going to be visible. If I were to come in here now and change the actual size of this circle, let's just scale it up. If I come back to the Luma map, you can see that the circle is now visible on the video clip. So you can actually use this to make some pretty cool transitions, or we'll make simple transitions in this case. But if you want, you can make some transitions using this effect 
by just basically animating shapes on a black and white layer and then referencing that using Illumimat. So just to kind of practice that, let's scale this circle down to 0%. We'll add a keyframe at the very start here. And then we'll jump forward maybe three seconds and we'll just scale this up until the frame is full. This is a very simple transition. Highlight both of those keyframes and we're going to go easy ease, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now you're gonna get this animation where the circle just grows and fills the frame. And if we come back to our video layer, you can see that we now have no clips showing and then the circle grows and reveals our video clip. Like you can obviously make much more complicated transitions than just this. It really gives you infinite possibilities for the transitions you can create using these Luma and Alpha Mats. But this is a very kind of practical and simple example for something that you might want to do so you can have a little bit more customization with your transitions than just using default transitions in Premiere. So I showed you a more simple transition there with that circle, but now I'm going to show you a different transition that you can make in After Effects using track mats that's a little bit more complex and kind of also illustrates the difference between an alpha mat and a luma mat in a more practical scenario. So I'm going to grab this paper rip transition here that I have on my website as part of the ultimate paper texture pack. And we're gonna use this to transition from this first clip of this volleyball player walking up with the ball to the second clip of him going up and hitting a spike. So first let's rotate this to actually fit a 16 by nine frame because right now it defaults to being made for a nine by 16 frame. Now we have this paper rip transition that's ripping across and we're gonna drag this to the start of our second clip which is on top and that's where our transition is going to begin. And we want this transition to go to about here. So we're going to drag our first clip to be that far. And then we're going to take our second clip here, which is of the player spiking the ball, and we're going to add a track mat and select our paper rip transition as the source. And now you can see when we come across here, we have our second clip of the player going up to spike that's visible, and it kind of rips away over top of the first clip. And now you do have to be a little bit careful in these scenarios because we've applied a track mat to this second clip here, and the second clip is longer than the duration of the actual transition. If any clip comes beneath this second clip while the track mat is enabled, then that clip is gonna show through. So you can see if I pull this first clip here, then we get our first clip, we do the rip, but then when that transition ends, because there's still a track mat enabled on this clip, we can just see through it to that first clip, and it ends up looking really jarring and not like something that you want in your video. So what I'll typically do to avoid this is hit Command Shift D at the end of our transition to add a cut. And then I'll just remove the track mat off of that second half of the layer that I cut. That way it just plays through like a normal video clip. And then when you play everything through, you're gonna end up getting something that looks normal even if you have this first clip underneath when maybe it wasn't supposed to be there. Now going back to the transition, you can see that I selected an alpha mat to do this transition. But if I were to turn this into a luma mat, then you can see through to the texture of the bottom layer here. And if I disable this layer, then you can see that texture is gone. And if I turn it on, you can see that that texture is back. And that's happening because on the actual transition here, I have all these black specks and things that are showing through and kind of let the clip beneath come up. So if you like the way that that texture looks and it gives your video a little bit more of an edge or some grit, then you have the option to include that, but you can also just turn on Alpha Mat and get rid of it. And that kind of brings up one other way that you can use these paper transitions. So if I were to just take a copy of this, let's move it over here to this second bit that we've cut. We'll put it over top, and we're going to go to a section where the entire frame is covered in white, which is right there. So let's right click, we'll go time and freeze frame, and then we're gonna drag this layer all the way on top of our clip. Let's rename this to hold texture. And now let's turn that layer off. We'll come to the second half of our clip here that's not in the transition. And we're going to click on hold texture as our reference. And instead of using an alpha mat, and obviously that's not doing anything because this is all visible, we're going to select a luma mat. And what that does is kind of show through this paper texture by creating black areas everywhere where there's a black area on this paper. And it gives your clip this cool like overlay of a paper texture that you could then go through and animate or adjust or keyframe the same way we did to that circle to get a paper texture effect that you like. And I think that that personally looks a lot better and gives it kind of this vintage look compared to just your regular clip. You can do this with like any animated or still texture image you find 
anywhere basically to just give your clips a bit of a different look. And it's something that I actually do in my videos pretty often. One final way that I'll often use alpha mats and luma mats in my videos is to create flicker or glitch effects in my videos. And I'm gonna show you again how we can very easily do that. So let's create a new composition here and we'll call this flicker. We're gonna to come to our new composition. Let's create a new solid. We're gonna make that solid black. And then we'll create another solid and let's make that one white. Now to the white solid, we're gonna add the Venetian blinds effect. And this is gonna kind of give us this like line type of look. You can adjust this however you want. You can even change the direction of it if you want. You can change the width and make it big or small. But I think that when you do this, it kind of can give you this digital type of effect. So let's go through and add another Venetian blinds effect to this. We'll change the transition completeness to 9% just as we did previously. And then we're gonna adjust the direction to be 90 degrees. And we can take the width down to five like we did before. And this is giving us this textured grid. And now in addition to this, we can add a Lumetri color effect. And we're going to adjust the exposure here. Let's just adjust it as we want and keyframe it. Now you can come down to your white layer and click U to see all effects that are keyframed, which in this case is just the exposure. We're gonna hold Option or Alt on PC and we're gonna left click on it. And then we're going to write a wiggle expression. So we'll go wiggle and we'll have a frequency of 10 and we'll wiggle by one stop. And this is gonna create this kind of fast flicker where we're gonna get the exposure value going up or down by a value of one from what we had set it out initially, which as you can see here was 0.1. And it's gonna, because we have a white solid on top that has these lines and then we have a black solid on the bottom, you're gonna see this image get lighter and darker as this flicker layer goes through. So now we're gonna take our flicker effect that we've created and we're gonna drag it into this spike composition. We'll take the track mat on our spike shot, set it to flicker, and we can set that to be a luma mat. And then we have this black grid overlay and we get a shot that's gonna have this flicker in it where it gets lighter and darker as the clip progresses. Now, this probably isn't like the best specific effects to be using in this case. I liked that like vintage paper overlay look a little bit more. But if you're gonna be using glitch effects, you can create really cool animated ones with like flickering lights and line overlays and a whole bunch of other stuff by using simple alpha and luma mats on all of your clips. And it's something that I do basically every single time I wanna make an edit that uses like technological based or glitch looking effect. As you've seen, track mats are a powerful tool that you can use in After Effects to get some pretty awesome results. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this on a regular basis and I'd love to have you around for that. If you have any questions or comments relating to anything we talked about in this video, just go drop it down in the comment section. I would love to have a discussion with you down there. And that is going to be all for this one. So until next time, peace.